Okay, so this one, I'm going to kind of expand it again to get a sense of what's happening. So on top I have one times two times three times, you know, dot, 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 all the way up to n minus one and then n. On the bottom, I just have n times n times n and the exact same number of factors on top as I have on the bottom. And not sure why I put brackets around this guy. Let's see if I can erase them. If I'm, oh, no, that's not good. Um, n dot n. Let me put some more dots here, whatever. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Well, I'm just going to make an observation and group this in a judicious manner. One over n. So I'm just going to separate the one over n in front there and then look at the rest of it and say, what is going on? Um, and dot, and dot, 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 and dot. Okay, the key observation here is to say, well, look at this. <clears throat> I got a whole bunch of numbers appearing there. I got a two and a three, and there's a four that's hidden, and five and six and so on. Okay, the largest number I see here is N. Okay, so this is less than one, and this is less than one, and all these products along the way are less than one. Okay, so this thing that's up, that I've underlined is necessarily less than or equal to one. Okay, so from that I conclude that I have one over n dot one over here. So the thing that I marked up in blue, if I replace it with one, I get something overall that's bigger. Okay, maybe one more time. If you take one over n and you multiply it by something that's less than one, Uh, then that must be less than or equal to, you know, just one over n. Okay, now we'll use squeeze theorem. Um, so therefore we have, okay, a n is certainly bigger than zero. And it's between zero and one over n. Now the limit here is zero, and the limit here is also zero. So therefore, the limit of an is zero.